Well, hello everybody. Thanks for tuning in. This is a closed knuckle Dana 44 axle from a 1966 Jeep J3000. Uh, this is the Jeep we are currently building. And at this point we're on the front axle. So um, axle's been cleaned, axle's been prepped, uh, painted, and now we're uh, gonna be reassembling you know, this side of the front axle. So um, first thing we're gonna do is put the axle shaft into the axle. Next thing is this little felt grease seal. It just goes behind the knuckle. I put it as far back as I can to keep it out of the way. These are the little retainers that hold the grease shield in place. We'll put these on in a little bit. Next is this vinyl seal. The metal part here goes into the knuckle on the back side. So we're gonna put it on like this. It comes split so that you can fit it behind the knuckle. Next is the knuckle itself. Now it kind of goes together with two other parts. The king pins and these cone bearings. One cone sits on top while the other sits underneath right here. Each kingpin, kingpin gets four of these longer bolts. Now this top one has the shims. They made these a little bit taller in the later models when they were using this system so that you wouldn't have to shim the bottom and the top. And whenever I do this, I like to tighten the bottom uh, pin first before I tighten the top pin. That feels about right. We'll adjust these more as we drive the vehicle once it's done. Now on the back side of the knuckle is where we're gonna put that vinyl seal. I like to put the slit in the vinyl seal pointing up. That's kind of what it looks like. This vinyl seal recesses into this groove and it fits in there. You cover it with the felt seal and then you use those retainers to uh, put it all together. Each of these retainers gets four bolts and each bolt comes with one of these little washers that has teeth on it to help it grip. So I didn't really tighten those very tight, just enough to kind of feel like it's sealed enough and seated that vinyl seal really well inside the knuckle. Um, so this is the identification of the joint. So on these old Jeeps, when they were rolling around, like multiples of them, um, they have three different types of joints. This one came with a spicer joint. I don't know if you can see that very well. Um, there was also, an Arzeppa joint, I think is how you pronounce it. I have, I have no idea actually. And the other one was, uh, I think it was called a Bendix. So we're gonna go ahead and put this on here because I'm kind of nostalgic like that. And I like these little tags. Like these are the things that make the Jeeps for me when I, when I go through these. That tag is on now, so I'm just gonna go through and feel all of the bolts and make sure they're kind of about the same tightness. Okay, so that's pretty good. Let's move on to the next part. That's putting on the spindle. This is the spindle. Just goes on to here. In order for me to make sure that I keep it centered and in these, 
I kind of pre-run the, the bolts into there before I press it in. There are six bolts with locking washers. Now that we have the spindle set, we'll take these bolts out because we have to put the back of the brake shield on there. Well, now we do the brakes. Now the shoes are held on by these retaining little washers, this uh, thing, and then a spring. This goes through first, and we get the shoe, then one of the washers, then the spring, then the other washer. The little washers have like a tiny slit that goes horizontal or vertical, I guess, whichever position it's in. Once it's onto this uh, little uh, nail here, you just kind of got to give it a 90 degree so that it'll retain the shoe onto the nail, just like that. This is the brake piston thing. It is held in place by the two shortest of the bolts and these also have the washers with the little teeth. Once the piston's installed, you put on these little, uh, little uh, dust covers. This is the scary part, because I don't have the real tool. I just use a flathead screwdriver. There's one. I'm not talking to you. And we're still alive. Okay, so now the brakes are assembled. Feels pretty smooth. I think our preload's, you know, nice. Now we're gonna put the hub assembly together. This has the seal, the inner bearing, the inner race, and the outer race already installed. Pre-lubricated all the bearings. Now the hub is retained by a series of washers and extremely large nuts. And before this rolls down the road, we will torque everything to the correct torque. Right now, I'm just assembling so we can put this thing back on the frame and I can more easily move the frame around. Now this truck came with a worn locking hub assembly. There is this inner part of the hub that when this engages, these teeth mesh with the teeth in there. Let's go ahead and put this on. This retaining ring goes over the end of the axle shaft and keeps it in place. Now we put on the outer half of the locking hub. Six bolts hold the hub together to the axle. Each one of these bolts has a flange washer that, that rests up against the side of the head of the bolt to try and keep it from untwisting, I guess. I'll do that once I'm closer to putting this thing back together and fully on the road. But that's how you do it. That's how you reassemble the hub assembly and the brakes for a closed knuckle Dana 44 axle. 
Hope you like the video. Bye bye. Get in the food rug. Yeah. I'm recording. By the way. I shouldn't walk past you with a pizza box. That's fine.